after watching this video, check out the new PhoneDog.com homepage and play the One Pod Bandit for your chance to win free phones. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah from PhoneDog.com, and this is the HTC Touch Pro 2 for T-Mobile, uh, the first U.S. carrier-branded version of this phone to hit. Uh, it's available today, August 12th, 2009, from T-Mobile at a whopping, and I do mean whopping, $349 after rebate with a two-year contract. $349. That is, uh, that's a lot, you know? That's like, $349 will get you this and this. Uh, assuming that this is the 16GB uh, iPhone 3GS and this is the BlackBerry Curve 8520, $129 for this one, $199 for that one, that adds up to what, $328? And this is $349. So you're paying a lot up front. Is it worth it? Well, I've had the phone for a little while now, I've been testing it out, and it is excellent. Uh, it's a beast of a business device, not for everybody. Um, and I show the Curve 8520 just because, uh, not just to make my little joke about the pricing being so high, but also because for a lot of people, I think the Curve 8520 will do for you what this will do for you. But for that, uh, you know, that, that group of folks who are serious power users, who want the functionality, the extra features that the Touch Pro 2 adds, you're not going to beat it. It's an excellent device. A couple things about the Timo version. They changed the styling a little bit. It's this mocha color. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. They changed the back panel a little bit as well. Uh, and this is as opposed to the original unlocked European version. Uh, you're also going to see this phone soon hit the other three major U.S. carriers, Sprint, AT&T, and Verizon. I know AT&T, it's being rumored they're going to call it the Tilt 2. Uh, hearkening back to the original tilt and uh, Sprint has a way of making HTC devices look a little bit you know their own here's the original touch pro in fact for Sprint Let's give you a little uh, little look and actually you know size comparison the touch pro 2 much larger than the original touch pro just as shiny <laughs> the very shiny screen in the unboxing video some somebody posted a comment about shiny screen why don't you take the screen protector off noob screen protectors off man it's just very shiny um, like the original you can see though the the big difference in addition to the giant 3.6 inch WVGA display on the touch pro 2 is you also get a much larger keyboard and the keyboard also tilts on the new phone as opposed to the Touch Pro. The Touch Pro keyboard I personally thought was very, very good. The Touch Pro 2 is, is out of this world. It's a fantastic keyboard, uh, a full five row QWERTY setup. It's offset just like a regular typewriter. You've got a dedicated number row. Uh, you've got a dedicated row on the bottom that's just, you know, spacebar and uh, other buttons, shortcut buttons, your alt button, control, messaging, yeah, your punctuation keys, you've got a little D-pad over here, you know, kind of a cursor key, it's not really a D-pad. Um, but, you know, just a very, very comfortable keyboard to type on, one of, if not the best in the mobile world. Uh, you know, I just can't say enough good things about it. The tilting screen is nice, because um, it's a little bit more of a comfortable angle to use if you're doing a lot with your phone. Uh, we'll go back here to the home bar, home button rather. You've got my fave support, and then you've got Touch Flow 3D. Uh, the phone comes with a stylus, but it is pretty finger friendly for a resistive touch display. So you've got you know the same Touch Flow 3D that you see on other HTC devices with a couple of T-Mobile add-ins. A um, couple of things about the T-Mobile version I'd started to talk about before, and then I got into the styling. One is that um, the phone does not support UMA calling. It does Wi-Fi and it does MyFace, but not UMA calling which again in a T-Mobile phone like the Curve 8520 you're gonna get UMA calling. Uh, not exactly sure why they put it on some Wi-Fi smartphones and not others. Uh, the Blackberry seem to have it. Um, but in any case that's not an HTC thing, that's a T-Mobile thing. No, no UMA calling. The other thing which is kind of an HTC to T-Mobile thing is that the speaker phone on the Touch Pro 2, the T-Mobile version is limited to three-way calling. I tried doing a conference call with some phone dog folks and we had a total of four people who were going to get on the call and I could not add the fourth person and I confirmed with T-Mobile it's limited to three people at a time 
whereas the Unlock Touch Pro 2, uh, I'm not sure what the, the total limitation is, but I know you can go beyond three people. So that's kind of too bad because the call quality on this phone is excellent and the speakerphone is just absolutely excellent for a mobile device. When you make a call, um, let's go to, uh, so let's call my voicemail here, and you make a call and you flip the phone over and the speaker automatically comes on. You can see a little green light came on. I will be helping you set up your voicemail in three easy steps. And uh, the, the speakerphone is just great. It's got a mute button that you can turn on so it's very easy to mute the call so if you know I was on a call with John and Adriana and our boss and uh, I was with John and Adriana in the room and our boss is on the other line we could hit mute and you know talk smack about our boss without him hearing us um, but you know it's kind of a nice it's a high-level business business feature and for people who um, for people whose mobile phone is their only phone or they're on their mobile phone a lot it's these little kinds of things that really, you know, HTC knows what they're doing and they, they can tailor this to the power user who is the intended user of this phone. Uh, in addition to that, you've got, you know, it's basically uh, more or less the same as the original version, um, except for those, you know, the my faves and then the unfortunate uh, capping of the conference call support. Um, but you've got the 3.6 inch WVGA display, as I mentioned, resistive touch, but it works well. Uh, you've got the browser, it's got the T-Mobile web to go so we'll, we'll fire that up and it goes Internet Explorer when you launch from the browser and it goes to web to go okay I'm not I'm not enabled because I'm connected via Wi-Fi but the thing is, and this is sort of too bad because um, I really think they should just make make it go through Opera no matter what um, it does have, the phone does have Opera on it and the browser shortcut doesn't take you there either, but if you go to programs, now you've got the Opera browser, which uh, to me is a better browser, Opera Mobile, than Internet Explorer. And so you can get in that way, and it still goes to the T-Mobile homepage by default. So I'm sure there are business reasons why, you know, whatever, but it's kind of like, why not just make Opera the default browser if it's, a, if it's on here already and it's a better, you know, it's a better mousetrap. But that being said, once you're in there, Opera works well. You've got the zoom bar, which is a nice little feature on the bottom that lets you zoom in on things. Um, so it's, it makes for, for more, more easy. It makes for easier one-handed operation of the phone um, because it's pretty easy to access the bottom row there where the zoom bar is uh, just with you know the thumb of the hand you're holding the phone with. And then when you've zoomed in, scrolling around works pretty well. Again, you know, not capacitive, not multi-touch, but still works pretty well. Um, accelerometer, so that'll get you back, you know, into widescreen mode. It'll rotate automatically, and then you can still use hello. You can still use the zoom bar for navigating around. And then obviously the QWERTY board comes in really handy when you want to navigate away from one site and go to a site that you like better and then you can tilt the phone up. Uh, the screen, you know, as you can see, is very shiny, very reflective. Uh, worked pretty well for me in indoor and outdoor lighting, but you do get some glare. You know, it's like a, a glossy display as opposed to a matte display on a, on a uh, laptop. Um, when you're in lighting conditions, like right now with my lighting kit that I use for video sometimes, I'm uh, definitely getting the glare. If I turn the overhead light off here, still getting glare from the outside and even just from the chrome on my tripod so um you know that is a little bit it's not really an issue it's just kind of you know it is what it is opera mobile here connecting via wi-fi works very well the phone also works well over t-mobile's uh, aws 3g banding as long as you're within coverage and so that's one of the things with this phone since it is coming out on other carriers uh if t-mobile 3g doesn't work where you are you might want to wait um, also, the 349 price tag, pretty hefty. Don't know yet what the phone's going to cost on other carriers, but um, you know that is uh, that's a steep price tag. T-Mobile's most expensive phone, the MyTouch 3G is only 199. The um, you know on other carriers you can get an iPhone 3GS or a Palm Pre, you know for the 199 price point. So 349, a lot to spend. But if you're a Windows Mobile power user, I think you know this is really the best QWERTY enabled Windows mobile phone on the market, I would say. Um, 
in whatever form, whether it's the T-Mobile or the Unlocked or the other carrier versions coming. Speaking of the other carrier versions coming, one of the things about this phone, a little bit of a drawback, is it still has um, the HTC USB connector with audio support in it. So for your headphones, you plug in USB headphones or a USB adapter here. I've seen some leaked screenshots online, or rather leaked photos online, that possibly the Sprint and or Verizon phones of this, versions of this phone will have a standard 35 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, HTC said they're going to switch over to 35 millimeter headphone jacks going forward. The Hero has it. So far, none of the branded phones in the U.S. have it. The My Touch 3G doesn't, and the T-Mobile Touch Pro 2 doesn't. Supposedly, the Sprint version and maybe the Verizon version as well will have a 35 millimeter headphone jack. So something to keep keep in mind, just if uh, you know if that's that kind of thing is important to you. Um, otherwise, you know. It's a nice device. It all works well. You've seen TouchFlow, bef bef TouchFlow 3D before. You've seen um, the Touch Pro 2 and the Touch Diamond 2 in their unlocked versions before. And basically, you're getting the same thing with some stylistic changes and uh, you know some little annoying things like the, the capping of the conference call beyond three callers and Internet Explorer being the default browser instead of IE. But otherwise, if you're on T-Mobile, uh, you've been waiting for the Touch Pro 2, and or if you're on T-Mobile or considering T-Mobile and you're a Windows Mobile Power user, uh, again, I can't say enough good things about the keyboard on this phone. And in general, you know, it's a large device. Uh, we'll put it next to that BlackBerry again. And, um, you know, no contest here. It's, uh, it's taller. It's a little bit wider, but it's much thicker. Um, so it's for the power user. If you're looking for a messaging phone, I don't think this is the phone for you, price and size. Uh, you might want to consider the BlackBerry. You might want to consider a phone like the, um, got it back here, like the MyTouch 3G. You know, obviously much smaller, but you're getting a smaller screen, obviously different platform, all that kind of stuff. And you're not getting the, uh, the lush, lush keyboard of the Touch Pro 2. Uh, compared to other T-Mobile Windows Mobile devices, I would take this over the Dash in a heartbeat myself. But if you don't do a lot of heavy web browsing, the Dash 3G, you know, it's that nice slim form factor with the QWERTY and the trackball, and it works well if you're a Windows Mobile user. Uh, you don't get the TouchFlow 3G experience, um, which I think is quite nice as well. So there you go. For the power user for T-Mobile, if you don't mind the price, if you don't mind the size, uh, big thumbs up for the Touch Pro 2 in general. And, you know, like a thumb up and a second thumb mostly up, but just a little bit down for the modifications T-Mobile made to it. And then the thumb goes way down for the pricing, because 349 is stiff. Till next time, thanks for watching. I'm Noah from PhoneDog.com. Much, much more on the Touch, the, the Touch Pro 2. Again, you can check out the unboxing. You can check out the review of the unlocked version. Uh, but now I've got the T-Mobile version, and we should soon be getting the Sprint, Verizon, and AT&T versions, uh, you know, in whatever order they come out in over the next few months. All that and much, much more on PhoneDog.com. Till next time, thanks for watching. We'll see you later.